a little bit about Moen. Um, you know, Moen is a consumer goods company, and our vision is is really to be a trusted global supplier of water delivery solutions for better living. And we're really focused on the customer and the individual. And I think anyone that's done um, business with Moen and just need to follow up, you know, one of the shining stars that we have in our business is our consumer uh, call center, where people can call in with any sort of problem, questions, whatever. Um, and it's just a fabulous asset that we have. When I run into people on the street and they said, oh, I know your product, we love your product, but boy, your support is just, just fantastic. So our focus is really around the customer. Uh, Moen in itself, we're approximately a billion dollar company. We have 2,500 employees worldwide. Operations include the U.S., uh, China, India, Canada, and Mexico. We have two assembly uh, factories. One of them is in New Bern, North Carolina. The other one is in Guangzhou, China. We also have a finishing factory down in Sanford. And then in distribution, we have distribution centers, two in the U.S., one of them in, in Kinston, North Carolina, one in Las Vegas. And then we also have distribution in Saltillo, Mexico, Oakville, Canada, near Toronto, Shanghai, and uh, Delhi, India. Our situation analysis that really led us to inventory optimization had to do with working capital. Um, our, our customer service uh, was good. Um, we, you know, we pride ourselves on that. That's our main driver is we want to supply the customer at, at an acceptable fill rate. The working capital side, we wanted to make some improvements there. We just had too much uh, money tied up uh, in inventory, and we knew that we could, we could do a better job there. So our, our situation really was uh, an improvement in our working capital expense, and we found inventory optimization a, uh, a way of going after that looked at inventory optimization, we really thought this as inventory rebalance and what is the right balance that we have between our finished goods uh, and our components. We had a fairly robust process that dealt with setting safety stocks at a finished good level. Um, it was DC by DC, they weren't linked, but we did not have a solid process to determine our component inventory and what our safety stocks should be. And we knew that we were over-indexed on the finished goods to help support our service. I mean, it was just something that was pretty intuitive. And we used inventory rebalance to start applying the math to that to understand the true drivers behind it. Um, and once we got in there, we, you know, we discovered, yes, we were over-indexed in, in finished goods. We, um, we needed more investment on the component side. Now, of course, there's pluses and minuses, but in generality, that's what we saw. We really wanted to use multi-echelon because that was the nature of our problem. We didn't want, you know, we did not feel that between DCs we had the most significant problem, but it was our balance between our components and our finished goods. So by looking at that particular product line, it offered us the right combination of a variety of suppliers, a variety of distribution networks out, um, you know, through our different DCs and the mix of products because it had assembly in there, it had finishing in there that would drive through all of our U.S. plants. So it was really a nice diverse pilot that we could put together and, uh, and really test the multi-echelon. In rebalancing inventory, we really wanted to strike that balance between the components and the finished goods. Um, and we knew that we were over-indexed on, on the finished goods. Um, so we wanted to get just the right inventory in the right spot because our main driver still is service. And of course we want to do service at the optimal cost because we have a driver to improve uh, working capital. So the main driver again was the balance between the two. Now in the end we got an overall reduction um, which was, which was a, you know, a benefit and we're seeing that that we're maintaining our customer service levels at our target levels with the, uh, with the lower investment. Prior to this, we, we held the inventory in finished goods because, again, that was 
that's the way we knew that we could service the customer. And if we were going to air anything, we were going to do it on finished goods because we didn't have that linkage between the finished goods and, and the components. Now that we've established that link with a multi-echelon optimization, we can more effectively put it into components um, that we've, we've seen the pooling effect. Through that pooling effect, we've seen that we can maybe carry less components on certain ones that have a high degree of pooling, but a much more substantial investment on ones that are more unique and more sub subject to variation. The pooling effect is, is through this, we find that a component is used maybe in multiple uh, top-level assemblies. And because of that, uh, each of those top-level assemblies have varying degrees of variability. And because uh, you've got a multitude of variability that you add that together down the component level, it will actually reduce the amount of variability that component sees. And with reduced variability at the component side, that individual component, we don't need to carry less, allowing us to take the dollars to the more, you know, to the components that do have much more variability that would help our service. We've been pretty consistent as we've gone through the project. Our, our first pilot, as I mentioned, with our CFG product line, we saw approximately a 25% overall reduction uh, in our safety stock investment. Um, and in that, you know, in that pilot, you know, part of it was testing out the processes, testing out the procedures, making sure we had the correct metrics in place. So that was very successful. So we said, okay, let's try a second pilot. So we did another um, uh, pilot, which was through our commercial line. And that, again, saw approximately 25% uh, savings. Now, as we've rolled this out to production, and right now we're using this for approximately 75% of our, all of our U.S. production, uh, we're, seeing, uh, we're seeing savings in that 25% range uh, pretty much across the board. And pretty consistent where we're uh, bringing levels of components up, we're bringing finished goods down, but the net is 25%. The qualitative, I'm going to mix a little qualitative and quantitative uh, in that uh, one of the things that we really stress is data accuracy and master data accuracy. Um, we spend a lot of time scrubbing data. Um, a lot of time verifying it because we want to make sure these models are reflecting reality and, and true um, and giving us the true picture. And what this also showed us was it identified spots in the business where we could go after certain areas of uh, possibly in, uh, increased forecast accuracy, um, certain areas where we could work on suppliers and reducing their variability. So it really helped us pinpoint some of those areas that we could go after and improve our overall service. And the math truly works. Um, it's been uh, well received um, you know, by the company. We had a phased in implementation. We want to make sure as we take these savings and we roll them in you know, financially to the company. One, we wanted to do it in a very controlled method. Uh, we wanted to do risk, reduce risk, and we also wanted to um, make sure that the people and executives uh, saw results coming back and we, you know, continue to get their buy into the project. Yeah.